What do you see when you look at this photograph? It's a railway bridge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Do you see the geometry of the beams? The vanishing point? Perhaps if you're close up, you can even see the cobwebs or the dangling wires in the picture. Or perhaps your eyes are drawn to the river below or the landscape behind. I'm interested in all the elements in this photograph. I'm trying to look at spaces that we pass over or pass through in a different way. I've been working for a number of years on a series of photographs on public infrastructure. And the word infrastructure is derived from the Latin, structura, meaning to build, and infra, meaning below. So by its very nature, infrastructure describes something that works behind the scenes. I'm fascinated by these spaces, spaces that are overlooked and are in between. And to begin, I should talk a little bit about my practice and the type of camera that I use. So we're in a very much a digital age, and it's hard to trust what uh, you see sometimes. So I just want to explain. I shoot on film, in this case, sheet film. And these pictures are not digitally manipulated in any way. And this huge camera behind me uh, is the camera that I use to take all my photographs. And it is it's what's called an 8 by 10 inch large format camera. And it's very similar in uh, how it was designed to the types of cameras that were used in the 19th century. And it's a really slow camera to use. So um, both for me to get to the location that I want to photograph and also to set up and actually take a picture. For example, the most photographs I've ever managed to take in one day is eight. <laughs> that was a 12 hour day. So I'm working in a slightly different process. So, so why am I using this camera? And why am I making my life difficult? Um, well, there's a couple reasons, but mostly it's about control. This camera lets me have a depth of field, control the depth of field, control the perspective of my images, and also control the composition of my images with such a higher degree of precision than most cameras out there. And it creates an image that is, has an incredibly high level of resolution. So you see it's a tremendous amount of detail. And I can show you that in this next picture. This is a photograph that I took underneath I-95 in Baltimore. And I think you can see it's a huge mound of earth in the picture. If you look below the mound of earth, there's a little black dot that's resting on a concrete block. So we can zoom into the picture, but we can get closer. Get closer, we realize it's a backpack. We can get even closer and see what's inside the backpack. And according at least to my wife, that's a can of uh, Coke Zero that's been crushed up in the bottom. Um, it's the black can, I was, we were trying to figure it out. And uh, there's an instruction guide also to uh, how to use a drill part, a drill tool. And in the actual print of this photograph, you can even read the text on the instruction guide. So this is a, a comparison so you can see the level of detail that is possible with this camera. And for me, this, this level of resolution is really important in the pictures that I take because I might make my prints about five feet by six feet in size. They're similar to the proportion of the human body. And the idea behind that when I'm exhibiting my work is that they feel like windows that are an immersive experience that so you can go up and explore the picture and see details in the picture that change how you perceive the overall image um, and maybe make you think about it in a different way. So I began this project about six years ago. And it's taken so many <laughs> twists and turns and it's gone in very, very different directions. Uh, it's been a bit like going down a rabbit hole. But it started off with a real interest in um, early American architecture and engineering. But as the work progressed, I started to have a, more contemporary questions or um, think about that a lot more. And in particular, what I was interested in was the relationship to these structures to the natural environment and how these spaces function both as a social space and a public space. When I started this work, I was living in Washington, D.C., and probably the genesis of it was an, a real fascination I've had for a long time about the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, Canal, which was a canal um, that was built in the early 19th century, and it was intended to go from Georgetown to Pittsburgh. It never made it to Pittsburgh, um, but it's another story. Um, <laughs> and 
the CNO Canal, as it's called, and its main rival, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, were the two major infrastructure projects that were happening in the Mid-Atlantic during this time period. I became fascinated by the structures that these two companies built, particularly the bridges and the tunnels. And I had a rather crazy idea of wanting to see them in a different way. And so that involved me taking that huge camera plus a tripod and getting inside of them. I wanted to see the structures from the inside out. And what I really got into at first was this perspective of the interior of a bridge itself. This is, this is what's called a substructure. So it's the part of the bridge that holds up the deck, the top of the bridge. So I'd climb up into them and photograph in, in that space. And that's, that the, the viewpoint was something that I'd never seen before. It's really disorientating. Um, you have this incredible depth you know, it, down the center. And then what also intrigued me was the idea that you would see the landscape below you, not above you. So in this photograph, I'm standing in the substructure of a bridge, and the roof is actually a live train track. And so when I was taking this photograph, a train went by, um, which was a bit terrifying, but it was, it was an interesting experience. <laughs> so as the work progressed, I started photographing more modern bridges as well. And I had a real revelation with this particular photograph. Um, and I got really lucky. I don't claim responsibility for this, <laughs> exactly. But if you notice, there's uh, the clouds in the background. They line up almost perfectly with those white painted um, rings that are around the front of the, um, the, the bridge structure. And that, those uh, rings are actually there. They're, they were painted on as a high water mark for this bridge because it passes over a um, pool of water. But for me, it started to become like the clouds could almost pass through the bridge itself. There was a relationship there. And so that occurred about four years ago, right when I was moving to Baltimore. And I realized that the subjects of my photographs wasn't just the infrastructure, but it was the relationship of the infrastructure to the environment around them. And with that sort of shift in my thinking, how I made my photographs started to change. Initially, when I was taking pictures, I was really trying to avoid photographing uh, graffiti or trash, including them in the picture, because I thought that it located the photograph too much in one moment in time. And when I sort of shifted how I thought about this, I started noticing and becoming really intrigued by how certain types of graffiti or certain types of mark making could change how you perceive the architecture as a whole. It added a personal voice. These marks are made by a person. They're not made by a company. And if you're spending a lot of time uh, underneath bridges, like I tend to do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you meet some really interesting people. And, um, <laughs> and you have very interesting experiences. And, and, and I really became fascinated by that subculture. And I wanted to include that element into the work itself. It was important to me. So these, this picture that you're seeing here is paintballs that are shot onto a, the uh, underside of a bridge. It was done by an anarchist collective. And there's a duality in this picture that I, really appeals to me. It's really pretty in one sense, the, the, paint, the way the paint layers on the concrete. But then also, there's an inherent violence in how it was actually created. That these dualities are things that I keep coming back to. So I began noticing phrases and texts written on, in the most unusual of places. This is a uh, pedestrian overpass in Pittsburgh. And it's an area that's really been uh, struck hard by the Oxycontin and heroin use in that neighborhood. And the text that's written on the base of this, uh, this uh, pedestrian overpass says, pain is all in your mind. Exclamation point. I found that text was really strange and really uh, thought-provoking. It changed how I, I thought about this photograph, it changed how I composed it, what, what it meant. And I couldn't really tell whether that was a positive, that statement was a positive or a negative. It could be read both ways. And these sorts of perplexing situations I kept coming back to. This is seven heads painted on stones underneath a bridge in Baltimore. It's actually one of my favorite bridges in Baltimore. It's architecturally stunning. So it's bricks that are actually 
um, corkscrewing as they go over a highway. And the city of Baltimore decided to stick a bunch of stones underneath it, and homeless people are living behind those stones. And so in the photograph, you also will see a butane tank on the right, and even a tomato plant that I think they got from Home Depot is growing against the back wall of the, of the, the bridge itself. Baltimore is a city that is really close to my heart, and um, it's a really fascinating place. And part of it is because the past and present um, combined in really interesting ways there. This is a train track that runs on um, just outside of Baltimore, and there's a signal box in the foreground. And there's actually hobo marks that are painted on the signal box. Uh, hobo marks were designed for people who are riding the trains illegally to know if it was safe or not to get off of this area. But there's also this text that seems to be written almost like a childlike text, and you can see in this green box where it is, which says, always lost. So some of the juxtapositions just make me laugh. Um, <laughs> This is a stone cutting building uh, that was actually used to build the, um, to cut the stones that were used to build the CNO Canal and also some of the bridges that go over the Potomac. But for me, what makes this picture is a little arrow on the right hand side. Um, it's like an encouragement to start climbing. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to leave you with this image, which is a recent image I took in Baltimore. Um, and again, two heads. And one's pretty easy to see, it's the head of a ghost with red eyes and a mouth on the um, left-hand side. But in the center of the picture, there's another face, and it's a really haunting face of a woman, painted in a different hand, looking right back at us. What I've discovered from this project is that there's a lot to learn with, uh, um, from what is represented or confessed under bridges. I've come to think of these photo that these photographs could also reveal underlying questions about the society we're experiencing. These are public structures that are very orderly, yet they become a safe place where people can express themselves in ways they can't anywhere else. Thank you.